Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we shall perform a repotting, but it's a different one. We're gonna repot this catacetum orchid in a different pot and we will get to see what the roots were up to in this clay pot and the clay setup. The reason why I want to do this repotting right now is because this orchid has already started to create new growths and I see tiny, tiny roots starting to form. So I don't want to wait with repotting because I risk damaging those root tips. I would much rather do it now and this orchid actually didn't really have much of a door Dormancy. the leaves are just now shedding and when these growths started to appear the orchid was still green now this orchid is a millennium magic if you check the video from orchid web on this orchid you will see that in their climate this orchid doesn't really take any dormancies either so it's not something quite uncommon and I don't think it's a reason to worry either but once a year or every two years it's a good idea to repot these orchids because the roots on them don't tend to last all that long mine might just be a special case because it didn't go through a full dormancy and even if I manage to break these roots or damage them, the orchid will still be fine. Many people just got all of the old roots when they repot every year and pretty much everything is okay. Within a year, this orchid will fill a pot. Now, one of you guys, Habib, has asked me if I intend to keep these roots actually. I was telling you in a previous video that roots on them tend to last for about two years, so now one year. And well, that just depends on what I find in the pot and also how much I damage them. If I damage them too much, there's really no point in keeping them because they will simply rot and die away anyway but if I manage not to damage them it might be a different story so I'm not decided what I want to do right now I just want to repot this orchid and we'll see how the roots look like how they developed over one year in this new setup I think there are quite a lot of them alrighty then so the first thing that I'm gonna do right now is actually wet the orchid and soak the pot to make my life a little easier and you might be like but Danny, the orchid will rot if you water it. No, actually it won't. I never actually completely stopped watering because this pseudobulb was still shriveling up. The orchid didn't go through the dormancy. So no worries about that. I'm gonna go and soak this orchid and then we'll see what we'll do. Alrighty, so the medium is soaked, the roots are wet. And usually what I do is tip the pot over and eliminate a layer of medium. I'm not sure how much it will help in this case because this orchid and the pot is really heavy, it's just been watered. So my problem will be the roots that are attached to the pot, not the medium. But let's just see what happens. And yeah, that didn't help way too much, but maybe a little. So what I need to do now is try to detach the circuit from the pot. But since I don't have a knife here, I think this will do. Just need to detach these roots from the pot. Oh, there's a lot of them. Maybe this side will be more helpful. Okay, here we go, success. The roots have been detached. Okay. So as the orchid grew, it kind of started to push out the medium from the roots and every time I would just have to collect the medium from wherever it fell. And there you go, I did have quite a lot of air gaps or air pockets in the root system. But the roots don't look bad. I mean, it had a decent, decent growth I would say. Okay, so with this orchid, what I will do, I just decided, is I will cut away the roots that attach to the pot and I managed to mess up. But the roots inside, I might just keep them one season. And because I'm gonna repot it in a clear plastic pot, I can see when they go bad, if they go bad, so I can intervene. Hopefully it's not gonna be the case, but I'm potting a catacetum from a plastic pot is a lot easier. So I'm just gonna clean up the roots that I managed to mess up and I'll come back when I'm done. Okay, so this is my orchid. There are quite a lot of roots and surprisingly enough, some root tips as well. I cut away everything that I kind of damaged and also I cut away the oldest pseudobulb because it had some weird yellowing and some weird spots here and there. And if I press on it, it's not the firmest thing. So this one might have rotten in the future and spread the disease to all the orchid. That's not what I want. This orchid has enough pseudobulbs. Catacetums can usually be propagated through back bulbs, one single pseudobulb, without any type of problem anyway, so it's not gonna miss that pseudobulb. So I will be using this pot, and I was actually pondering if I should use a bigger pot. And judging by the fit, 
Maybe I should have used a bigger pot, but you know, no, I think one year's growth is okay in this pot. As I was saying with catacetums, there's really no problem in repotting them very often. And many people just go as far as to cut all of the old root system. In my experience, it kind of lasts for two years, but after two years, it completely dies off. Okay, before we go ahead and do that, another thing that I want to try out with catacetums this year is slow release fertilizer. And I purchased myself some, so let's talk about that. Alrighty, so my fertilizer of choice is Miracle Grow. I wanted to purchase Osmocote, but for whatever reason, there was nobody actually shipping to Cyprus. And I really would have preferred it to buy it from Amazon and not eBay. But I could find this one. It has some decent reviews in any way. I am just interested in a little boost of nutrients because I will still fertilize with the MSU, so no worries about that. However, the directions of use on this package are a little bit confusing. So what they tell us is that a regular handful of granules is approximately 25 grams. Now, I'm not sure whose hand this is supposed to be because my hand is really tiny. If my boyfriend would try to fertilize this, most probably he will put twice as much as I could. But anyway, let's consider. But anyway, let's consider my hand is 25 grams. I'm not trying to over fertilize here. So let's go to the section of containers and hanging baskets. Sprinkle 25-50 grams per 10 liters of compost before planting. 10 liters, huh? I wonder how many liters this is. I presume it's less than a liter. So I would just have to eye it or eyeball it, however you want to call it, put a few granules and then we'll see what happens. And that's pretty much what I will do. So what we'll do is just put some granules in. But looky here, we have a measuring cup. And what does it say on it? It says Osmocote. Now I'm feeling a little silly. I'm not entirely sure if Osmocote is the brand or is the brand who actually invented Osmocote and now everybody who uses their formula of temperature related release needs to provide the Osmocote name. I am not sure, don't laugh at me about this. But anyway, for the amount of that we need to use, this little measuring spoon that has 25 and 50 grams measurements is not ideal. We're using a very tiny pot, but this surely will come in handy because I wanna use this with some hibiscus as well. Why not? Now, here is the packaging. We have quite a few bags. And this is really good because you know when you open an entire container, things can spoil all at once. Well, you just have to use one little bag and the rest of the bags will be perfectly fine. So great job, Miracle Grow. I, I'm digging packaging like this. Attention to details, that's good. Alrighty, let's read a little bit. We have 17, 9, 11. So this is obviously a growth fertilizer. We have added magnesium. We're gonna take a look at the ingredients as well after I finish up with the catacetum. And yeah, this is about it. We have different colored pebbles. Now this is a problem because I might put too many pebbles that are green and too less pebbles that are yellow. When dealing with such low quantities of soil or actually medium, it's pretty tricky, but We'll just do our best. Alrighty then, so I'm gonna place a little bit of medium in this pot right now and then pot the orchid and pour fertilizer as we go and we'll see what happens. So we have a first layer of medium here. It's already wet because it has been sterilized, soaked, rinsed and all of those things that both Leka and Ceramis require me to do. And now it's time to fit the orchid inside the pot. And I would really like to not center it and push it a little bit to one side for these growths to have more space. I will sprinkle a little bit more medium. One technique that has returned together with the plastic pot is the tap. And this is how the medium goes down in the pot. At least now we can see exactly how it disperses. The little tap, the little squeeze. Childhood memories, huh? Okay, I think I'm okay to add a little bit of fertilizer at this point. So I'm actually going to use this, but I'm not gonna measure anything with it. It's just that my gloves are a little bit wet. So this is the amount of fertilizer I'm gonna hopefully disperse evenly, kinda, a little bit. There we go. Let's continue with medium. So we added a little bit more medium. I think it's time to add a little bit more Miracle Grow fertilizer. Just a little bit. There we go. There we go. That's enough. 
And I think we're now safe to add the pebble layer. And I think this is enough. Funny thing is we have some fertilizer pebbles on the sides as well. So we will get to observe how they melt if they do. I'm not sure. Okay, so this is a table of contents. As you can see, no urea, which is good, but we do have ammonia, which is okay, let's say. And we do have nitrate as well, so that's good. So we have the MPKs and we also have magnesium, which is nice. You can never have enough magnesium. Well, actually you can, but fertilizers usually lack it. Boron, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, and zinc. Pretty much everything you would want except calcium. A reason why I sometimes use tap water or combine my osmosis water with tap water. And I also use a fertilizer that has added calcium. So as you can see, there is no calcium here. Keep that in mind. You would need to provide calcium separately through tap water or hard water or any other means that can introduce calcium to your soil. So this has been the repotting as a quantity of fertilizer that I used. Oh, it's really hard to estimate. I don't know. You saw on the footage, it's not a lot. And hopefully it's gonna be enough to make the catacetum grow beautifully and nicely. Catacetum orchids, unlike any other orchid, grow a very tall, well, not this one, obviously, but they can grow a very, very tall pseudobulb with a lot of leaves and actually very big leaves. And they can bloom as well and they will pretty much fill an entire pot with thick roots and they do require a lot of water, a lot of fertilizer. They're special in this regard and many catacetum growers actually use slow release fertilizer in addition to their normal fertilizer. So that's why I decided to give it a go and see if it improves the quality of my catacetums. I'm not necessarily complaining, but I think they can do better and particularly this one. He had a pretty slow recovery ever since I received it. I believe it can do better. Obviously it didn't bloom. So we'll see if this makes a difference. And of course I will keep you up to date. So thank you guys so much for watching. The good thing about clear plastic pots is that we can see the roots and the fertilizer. So two bonuses. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you hated it give it a thumbs down subscribe to my channel for daily orchids and plants videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video and with that said i'll see you guys tomorrow bye so the package from my mom arrived and look at here plastic pots galore i left most of them at home because i thought i will never use them oh why do you know life takes you in mysterious ways so now i can go ahead and repot as many orchids as i want